How is everybody doing? Um, we're going to take a look at every move you make, the studio recordings by the police. It's a six CD set. What you have is the five studio albums plus uh, a bonus disc of B-sides and that disc is called Flexible Strategies After Abuse. It says the studio recordings, it doesn't say complete so I guess um, it's not going to be the full shtick there's probably one or two early singles that you're not going to see. So this is the back of the box um, we have Outlandis de Moor from 1978 Regatta de Blanche from 1979, uh, Zenyatta Mandata 1980, Ghost in the Machine 1981, Synchronicity 1983, and the bonus B-side disc, um, Flexible Strategy, and it gives the year of each track as well. Yeah, very nice. This came out in late 2019. Um, nice package, it's quite heavy. So let's uh, open it up and uh, see what's inside. There we go. Box is pretty sturdy. This little ribbon for pulling them out, and then we got the uh, the Nyata Mandata style triangular artwork inside. Very very cool. Outlandos the Moor, um, gatefold style. Um, the original wasn't the gatefold. Um, these aren't like the Japanese miniatures, which you can pick up, uh, but they're expensive. Um, that's the uh, next to you, so lonely, Roxanne. All of my life, I like that track. Um, born in the fifties, can't stand losing you. Uh, born in the fifties, I think Andy Summers was born in the late forties, so it's not totally true of the three members. <laughs> Be my girl Sally is about a mail order doll, and Masako Tanga. The uh, disc A and M. That's what the um, record label would have looked like back in 1978. Uh, this album was produced by Nigel Gray. Yeah, not my favorite Police album by any means, but um, still a good album. Regatta de Blanc. Um, In a gatefold. Um, this is where it gets more interesting for me. Um, this is a good album. Message in a Bottle. Uh, Regatta de Banque. It's actually an instrumental. It's alright for you. Kind of similar to the stuff on their first album. Bring on the Night. I love that track. Um, Death Wish. Punky, Walking on the Moon, excellent. Um, on any other day, um, I think that's sung by um, Copeland. The best to be without you, bit of reggae, great. Contact, does everyone stare? And uh, no time this time. Yeah, it's a pretty good album again. Uh, produced by Nigel Gray, recorded at Surrey Sound Studios. Um, was their kind of breakthrough I'd say you know it was everywhere in 1979 album number three is Zenyatta Mandata um, interesting album um, they were touring heavily at the time uh, I think they said they kind of felt they rushed this one um, their sting with every type of bass you can think of. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, oh, look at that. Very nice. Very, 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 very nice. Uh, this was a big album at the time. Um, it doesn't follow the original artwork, by the way. Um, it's a, it's a, a variation on it. Um, don't stand that close to me. Uh, written about a teacher having an affair with a schoolgirl. Based on Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Driven to Tears. It's a great track. When the world is running down, you make the best of what's still around. I love that as well. It's about a guy who survives a nuclear war and he's stuck in a basement and stuff. Canary in a coal mine. This great voices on my head. Kind of half dubby. Bombs away. It's a great track as well. Dee doo doo doo. Dee da da da. One of the most perfect pop singles of all time. Behind my camel. Man in a suitcase. Shadows in the rain. More kind of slow reggae. And the other way of stopping. Yeah. It's, it's a entertaining album. And uh, there's plenty on it for anybody. Ghost of the Machine. Um, name of the album is um, taken from a book by Arthur Questler. Um, Sting was into him and Carl Jung. And all these people. Um, this album was kind of, um, you know, disappointed people when it came out. Uh, it's got spirits in the material world, which is fantastic. Um, Every Little Thing She Does Is Magic, again, an amazing uh, pop single. Invisible Sun, uh, video was banned. I think the single was banned by BBC uh, because of its um, uh, subject matter, which was about the troubles in Northern Ireland. Um, Hungry For You. Uh, Sting singing in French. Uh, this is probably the one of the weakest tracks on the album. Demolition Man. I like that. The lyrics are just funny. Um, too much information. The drum sound on this album is just massive. You know what I mean? Um, lots of vamps with the bass, uh, guitar figures that repeat almost a little bit like kind of African music and stuff like that, uh, and a little bit you know, like what uh, Talking Heads were doing on Remain in Life. Uh, re Rehumanize Yourself, I like that. Uh, One World, Not Three. Um, Omega Man. Um, it's a great track. Secret Journey. Very good. And Darkness. Uh, this was produced by Hugh Padjam. Uh, he went on to work with um, Phil Collins, Genesis. All back in 1981. Um, oh, look at that. That's so cool. That's the band um, in LED. <laughs> Um, very very nice. Um, it's excellent. Um, yeah, it's a dark album. Um, I've kind of grown to appreciate it over the years. A lot of people say, "Oh, it's got three great songs," and then it just kind of, you know, gets a bit monotonous. But it it's it's certainly the band stretching out and doing what they wanted to do. It's, it was still a huge success because the band was so big at the time. Uh, but, um, you know, a lot of fans were let down, they were a little bit confused by the long tracks, you know, and the, and the extended jamming and the vamps and stuff like that. Um, there's some, um, yeah, it's just one of my favourite albums, yeah. I just love the darkness of it. Um, and I love the cover. Um, it's, it's just sinister and, uh, yeah, it's great. I love it. And the uh, final album uh, is 1983's Synchronicity. The band were kind of at each other's throats by then. Uh, it was recorded in 1982 um, in um, a gear studio, Montserrat. Um, yeah, um, definitely their pinnacle. Uh, they're, they're, it's, it's just a great collection of material and uh, you know if an album came after this it would have been even better but um, I think um, the others were a little bit disillusioned by you know Sting taking the reins and but, but you know you got to hand it to him Sting was writing the hits you know and clever guy with 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 um, with, with, with songwriting very clever guy um, definitely you know, the police is a band, but Sting is writing the hits to keep the band going, you know. Synchronicity 1, um, great track, monstrous drums and that. Walking Your Footsteps, that's kind of 
synthetic with uh, synth guitar. Andy Summers was uh, using synth guitar even on Ghost of the Machine uh, for effect, uh, in uh, for, for for kind of soundscapes in the background and stuff. Uh, Miss Gordinko, love that. Um, Mother, <laughs> it's an Andy Summers track. It's crazy. It sounds like a bunch of elephants running through a bazaar. It's got a kind of Middle Eastern um, theme to it. It's insane, and he shouts the whole lyric. Um, it's quite funny. Um, I don't know how Sting left him put it on the album, but I guess you know. Then Synchronicity 2, another great track. Uh, Side 2 on the vinyl, Every Breath You Take, King of Pain, Wrapped Around Your Finger, Tea in the Sahara. Um, they're masterpieces. Uh, they're great songs. And, um, you know, this thing is a pretty formidable songwriter. And, uh, you know, at that stage, you know, he was kind of ready to go off and do his own thing. And sure enough, he did. And by 1985, he was after releasing the, uh, the Dream of the Blue Turtles, which was his first solo album. And I like that too, it's quite good. Uh, it's miles away from the police though, you know. Uh, because he used a lot of um, virtuoso jazz musicians and stuff like that. He expanded the whole palette of his songwriting and stuff like that. Which is, it's not a bad thing, you know. But I like the police, I think they're um, an incredible band and with a great sound. Okay, this is the bonus, Flexible Strategies. Um, nothing much in here except some blue um, negative prints. Um, the disc is just blue. And, uh, okay, so uh, dead in job, 1978. Landlord, 1979, um, Visions of the Night, 1979, Friends, 1980, A Sermon, 1980, Shambell, 1981. I absolutely love that track. It's an instrumental with um, Andy Summers playing the guitar solo. is played with chords um, over a, a bass vamp and some great drums. And then when the chorus kicks in, the drums are just like, leathered um, what a track I mean you know I think it should have been on um, Ghost of the Machine if it was on Ghost of the Machine instead of maybe Hungry For You with some lyrics or something man what a track um, yeah. Flexible Strategies that's another instrumental from 81 Low Life it's a good song yeah, kind of a 6-8 uh, kind of a rhythm and blues kind of style song. Um, I like it as well. Sting used to do it in his own live gigs. Um, I don't think it would have suited um, Ghost of the Machine, but it's a good B-side. Uh, Murder by Numbers. Um, this is a great track. And uh, it actually was um, on CD and cassette um, versions of Synchronicity. Um, it's not on this version for some reason. Uh, they've just kept it to the album like uh, uh, in a vinyl length but uh, Murder by Numbers is great um, it was kind of looked down on in America by some evangelist I can't remember and Sting performed it with Frank Zappa in the late 80s and uh, they do a great version of it it's, guitar sounds all out of tune on it it's kind of like warbly and stuff it's great Andy Summers is a great guitar player uh, Truth It's Everybody remix um, someone to talk to, uh, Once Upon a Daydream. Uh, they're both from, all of them are from 1983, but truth is everybody is from the actual um, early days. It's from the first album, but it's remixed here for some reason. Inside of the box looks great as well. You know, it's, it's, it's a very nice box set and um, I think I paid fifteen pounds for it on Amazon, so I mean you can't argue with that. I mean, what's that? Three euros per CD, um, something like that. I can't remember. I'm not good at maths, <laughs> um, but it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Came out in vinyl as well. There is um, the uh, Japanese edition, which is actually miniature vinyls. You can buy them on their own. I've seen them as well, like you know. But it'd be nice to have them in the box. But uh, with these, you know, you're fine. You're not gonna 
not really going to need them because this is such a bargain. You know? And by the way, they sound absolutely fantastic. Um, I just listened to them with headphones, uh, sampled them with headphones, and I never heard a police sounding this good. Another thing I noticed as well is um, Chambell has a few seconds of a count in with the uh, hi hat, and I've never heard that before. Uh, it usually came in on the snare, as far as I know. And uh, yeah, and flexible strategies. It sounds like some of the electric Miles Davis stuff back in the early 70s. Um, relentless. Um, yeah, the sound quality is amazing. Uh, the drums on um, Ghost in the Machine are massive. And uh, I have Message in a Box, which came out in 1993. Uh, sounds nothing compared to this. And Yadaman data sounds fantastic. The, the bass is tight. Um, this sounds great. They all sound good. Um, it was Abbey Road, I think, it was remastered. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, if you have the old uh, police albums, even the remastered ones, I'd say from the last 20 years, I'd say just sell them, throw them all away, and get this. This sounds fantastic. So uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I gotta say. Um, it's just like revisiting them again or hearing them for the first time. It sounds incredible. And for the price, you can't go wrong. So uh, yeah, get on there and get it. You know you want it. Take care. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe.